Good afternoon, internet. So today is the day that we start our next challenge, which is all about uh, possibly the most important um, part of your game, which is the mental side. Um, so for everybody who uh, did the 30 day challenge, thank you, you're awesome. I've missed you guys. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been weird not talking to people all the time. But yeah, this is a new background. I'm, um, I've come to my office, because I had to come get some cameras and stuff, because we're gonna start shooting some new content. Actually, you know, unfortunately not field content, but just advice stuff, because in California, we're still under um, quarantine, and I am not deemed essential, so I'm not allowed to uh, to go out on the field yet. So, um, guys, thank you for coming. Now, you know, when, when we've been doing these challenges, they've all been very, very important, right? So the first one was... Um, 30 days of footwork then we did our 30 day accountability and I was you know I was thinking like I, I want to do something with the mental side of the game um, but obviously that's not my specialty right I'm not a sports psychiatrist psychologist psychiatrist right Psycholog psychologist <laughs> yeah either or but right? I'm not one of those um, I know a little bit about it but not enough that I'd feel comfortable passing all of that on to you guys. Um, so, I brought in a friend of mine, Pepe Galvan, and Pepe worked with some top, top players. So, I'm gonna bring in Pepe now, and what I want you guys to know is, mostly, is Pepe's British accent, and he's actually Mexican. It's quite scary. So, I'm gonna add Pepe in, and then, Pepe is going to take us through what we're doing in this 10 day challenge. Pepe. David, how are you? I've just been showing off about your British accent, so. <laughs> nice, um, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, Pepe, we're going to do a 10 day challenge. First of all, thank you for coming on. Um, Pepe! All right. <laughs> Yes. It all went a bit Pete Tong. No one knows who Pete Tong is in America. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's 10 times better though. Okay. All right. Uh, right, you carry on and I'm going to try and save the first part of this video. Okay, perfect. If no, we'll start um, from the beginning. I don't mind. Okay, being... perfect. Yeah, do that. Yeah. It's not like we were halfway there, so. Yeah, <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're back again. It's good to see all of you here. So the first question I had for you guys was about mental toughness, because we'll be speaking today about the seven myths of mental toughness. So the first question was, well, do you think mental toughness is something that you have or that you don't have, that a person can have or that a person can't have, that doesn't have, that doesn't have the mental toughness? So the first thing that I want you to think about mental toughness is it's not something that you can think of like a switch. Either you have it or you don't have it. Mental toughness is something that you can develop. And that's, in fact, right now, I can assure you, you guys are mentally tough in some situations. So as I was saying initially, hopefully you can see my drawing board. Let me know if you can't see it. But imagine of a battery. Think of a battery. I just want to get this a bit closer. So imagine of a battery. I know my drawings are not that great, so just bear with me. But, you know, mental toughness is something that you continue to develop. So some of you have 10%, some could have 25%, some 50%, some 75%, 99%. But it also depends on the scenario, on the situation that you're facing. So it's important that you think about this because a lot of players that I work with when I ask them a question, do you think you're mentally tough? Their response is no. And I say, okay, give me an example. Well, the things that I remember this day or this situation. And what I tell them, that's a specific situation, but that doesn't mean 
that it applies entirely for you as a soccer player or all the time. So mental toughness, the first thing that I want you to think about this is that it's something that you already have. It could be just a bit, but that we're going to develop it. And that mental toughness depends on each situation. Because maybe when you're playing with your friends, there's no pressure. It's a pickup game. You're like, yeah, I, I am mentally tough. I trust myself. I can do everything. You can pull all the tricks that David teaches you and everything. But then once there's the, the challenging game comes, now it's different. So what changed? It's what's happening in here. So that's why it's important that you think that mental toughness is something that you have in specific situations and that you can develop. So what do you think about that, David? Is that clear, the first myth? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because that, that, was, that was always me, right? Like I was always good with my friends. And then it comes to a game and I used to go missing. Purposely, yes. I would go missing. Yes. I just wouldn't want to mess up. Yeah, you, you wouldn't ask for the ball, right? No. I yes. would literally, I would find myself taking two steps sideways to make sure there's a defender between me and the ball. Yeah. Because then I can't get the ball because then I can't mess up. Yes, yes. I, I hear you. And that's, and that's very common, but I'm sure there were some games, even if it was a pickup game, where it was entirely different. You oh, showed yeah. up for the ball. You were like, yeah, give them a ball. I can do everything. Yeah, because, you, you know, there's... And, you know, what? Kind of the, the funny thing is I remember them. Hmm. Those games, I remember all of them. Yes. The ones where you're on fire. Yes. I remember them all, but I remember more that fear. Yes. You know? Yes. Because it definitely stopped me from, from getting to a better level. Yeah. 100%. So can I ask you this? We'll just go into this and maybe it will help. Do you think that that fear came from an experience that maybe it was you know, a PK that you missed, a coach that was shouting at you very often? Is there something that you could say, I think it, it had to do with that? You know, <clears throat> I think it was a, a culmination of, of the pressure heaped on yourself. Yes. Right. So your coach obviously expects you to perform. Your parents may be watching, your friends are there. You don't want to let your teammates down. And with me especially, it was always like, if, if my first touch of the game, my very first touch of the game wasn't very good, done. Yes, you're out. And I, I feel like with me, what I nailed it down to years later was fear of not letting people down. Yes. Right? Mm. You can't let people down if you don't get the ball. Yes, true. So that was, with, that was my personal experience. Yes, yes. I relate to that as well. When I used to play, it was a very similar situation. I actually had a coach that was always yelling at me every time I did something that it wasn't even wrong, that he didn't approve or like. And this yeah. is something very common. So, so that's why I, I make this, this clarification that mental toughness is something that it, it's something that you build upon. You already have some of it. And now we have to find those situations where you're shy, you don't ask for the ball, you don't feel confident enough, but that we all have that mental toughness. We just have to learn how to grow or strengthen it in certain situations. So that's the first myth. The second myth, and it goes, it's N-A-D. N-A-D. Anyone have an idea of what that stands for? And I'll just do this. And on Espanol or English? No, obviously in English. <laughs> Come on, Juan, I heard you. <laughs> so uh, NAD, this stands for negative thoughts, being afraid, or what was the other one? Or doubt. Those three things, negative thoughts, being afraid, or doubt. That's part of being human. So 80% or more of our thoughts are negative thoughts. And why is this? Because most of our brain is just seeking to keep us alive. That's the only thing that it's worried about. It's not worried about you making that good pass of you scoring a goal. Most of your brain and most of your body is just working automatically. And it just wants to keep you alive. So ne thinking negatively, it's something that it does 
just on automatic because it wants to keep you alive. I'll give you a very simple example. If you see a car that's coming towards you, what do you do? Do you stay there or do you move? What, would, what do you think would be the, the response, David? We jump, right? We jump out of the way. Yeah. Why is that? Because fly or fight, right? Like, I'm not going to beat a car. Exactly. There's a negative thought and you say, if I continue to stay here, what could potentially happen is that the, heart, the car hits me and then something bad would happen. So then I decide to move, right? Yes. So thinking negatively actually helps us in many situations. Being afraid helps us in many situations. Being doubtful helps us in many situations. But sometimes this affects us in a negative way when we're playing. But something that I want to say to all of you guys is that 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 you feel, that that you think is part of being human. So just take a deep breath and say, oh, it's normal. I thought there was something wrong with me. And this happens to me all the time. I mean, I work with players at different levels, but I've, I've worked with players that have played World Cups, that have won all the titles, everything. And still, when they come to me, there's they have one of these, either yeah. negative, to, uh, ne negative self-talk, they're afraid of something, or they're doubtful that they can do it again. So it's part of being human. So it doesn't matter if you're 15, 12, or even 35 or whatever age. It's something that's part of being human. So that is very important that you think about. And instead of carrying this heavy stone on your back thinking, oh, it's just me, it's my fault. It's part of being human. So now that we know this, we can change it. We can approach it in a different way. Does that make sense, David? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm I sure... Say, I yeah. would say that, and I, I've said this in, in the build-up to this, we, we send this survey out, and I could, if, if I had my other computer with me, I could read through people's yes. comments. And it's everything you've just said is there. Yes, good. Worded, worded differently, but it's all the mentality ones are all the same. Yes, perfect. Great. So, so we're on the same page. So that's, that was the second myth. So, guys, if this is helping you, you know, you can give us thumbs up, send something, hearts. And if it doesn't help you or if you have any questions, just feel free to send a question. The third myth is sets and reps. Yes. So whenever my business is called Six Pack Mental, the name comes from this idea. Just as you're building a six pack in your abs, if you want to do that, what do you have to do? Obviously, you have to, you have to train for it, right? But also, you have to take care of what you're eating. It's the same thing with your, with, with your brain or with your mind. The thing is that most people say, most players that I work with, they're like, oh, no, I, I watched that video, that motivational video once. That should be enough. Oh, yeah, I, I, I like motivational quotes. Those should work. No, it, that's like going to a gym staring at all the equipment, waiting there for an hour, seeing how everybody is practicing, working hard, leaving, and after 30 days, say, hey, why am I not getting any stronger? Well, because you're not <laughs> doing any exercises. So, so this is something that I see affects a lot of players, that, that they're like, oh, I didn't know I can actually train. So most of us are walking around with flaccid brains you know they're just like really not strong there because we haven't trained them but the good news is that we can train it and it's actually quite exciting so and sometimes many players are like oh i'm not crazy i don't need to go to the psychologist i'm like no 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 but what, what, what mental toughness is it, it's that it takes you from here to here so if you're in a number one it takes you to not mean that there's something wrong with you um, I think I lost you there, David, but we're back, right? I'm back, yeah. Yeah, so, so guys, sets and reps. So the whole idea of mental toughness is that you have to do sets and reps. Just as you're working out with, with David, just watching the video is not enough, right? You actually have to do something with the ball, and you have to do it constantly. Initially, it's going to be hard. Initially, you won't get it. You'll feel a bit clumsy. 
but then bit by bit you start to get it. I actually have something to confess to you guys, and maybe David, I'm not sure if you knew this about me, but when I was in my teens, I was very, very shy, even in my early 20s. I was very shy. I couldn't speak to strangers. I couldn't speak to girls. I couldn't speak in public. I, I was just terrible for me. I was like, that, that's not for me. So, so I was like, I don't want to be like this always. And when somebody asked me, hey, why are you like that? I always would say, well, things that I'm shy, you know. And the person that helped me asked me, are you always shy? And uh, I said, yes. And he asked me, are you shy when you're with your parents and, and, uh, and you're speaking to them? Well, no. Are you shy <clears throat> when you're taking a shower? Are you like covering yourself up because you're so shy of watching yourself? No. Okay, so you're not always shy. You're just shy in certain circumstances and situations. So now you can develop bit by bit. So like I'm right now speaking to you guys. So what I did was I started speaking first to one person that I didn't know, then to two and then to three and so forth. And it kept building up. So it's very similar with mental toughness. And that's why I strongly believe in this because I've seen the results in me. And I've seen the results with my clients and even results with people that don't work with me, but actually do apply these things and they work with someone else. In the end, the important thing is that you apply it and you do sets and reps. Are we clear there? Sets what do you reps. think, David? Sets and reps, that's the key. Sets and reps, right? Yeah. So number, number four. So now that we're talking about sets and reps, number four, it's not about, be it about positivity. I hate that. Sorry, guys. But it's not about thinking, oh, yes, everything's sunshine and rainbows. And you just have to think positive. Yeah, yeah, law of attraction and just that and not doing anything. It's not about that, guys, either. It's not like you're just living in this world that does not exist. And you're always thinking that everything is going to go your way. It's not about positivity. It's more than that. And as I said initially, it's understanding that most of our thoughts are negative. It's understanding that we have to do sets and reps. Understanding it's something that we build. Understanding that it depends on each situation. But it's not about just positive thinking. And I'm sorry, but I'm actually sometimes tired of just seeing people that speak and speak about thinking positive. I'm like, it's not about that. You've got it wrong. So. I'm not sure what you, what you think, David, and we can discuss I mean, this a bit more. I feel, like, I feel like with that as well, it's, it's also a band-aid, isn't it? Yes. Do you know what I mean? You're not actually feeling the problem. You're like, okay, yeah. Yes. But let's feel positive today, and it will work for 10 minutes. Yes. Same thing as watching a video that's like like one of the Eric Thomas videos where you come out of it and you're feeling, oh, yeah, I'm going to exactly. this workout out, and then 10 minutes into it, you're like, oh. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. so what that does is like a sugar rush. It takes you really, really high for a day. It's like after watching a good movie, you're like, yeah, let's go and conquer it. And then it goes down. So the, the positivity, it, it, it's not enough. So let's say you had a bad game. You really had a bad game. And if I go to you and say, look, that doesn't matter. It, it, that's not enough. We have to analyze your game and say, look, yes, you didn't play a good game. And we analyze it, we see it, but then we learn from that. But it's not like just thinking, oh, yes, yeah, but don't worry. It's, everything's going to be fine. No. Soccer is the most competitive sport in the world. Most people in the world want to become a professional soccer player, want a scholarship in, in, in soccer. It is very competitive. It is hard. So it's not just about thinking positive. But it, it can also be a game. And that's, I think, the most interesting part of it. Because like a game, whenever you watch a game, you just don't know what's going to happen. And that makes it exciting. You know, we, we don't know how it's going to go. So that makes it really exciting. So, yes, yeah, sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it goes against you. But even when that happens, you just find a way and that keeps building you, building you, and you keep getting better. So that's why the fourth, fourth myth is it's not about positivity.
Good? Yeah, I like that. Like All right. Uh, okay, so number five. Number five. This is also, I think, guys, you, you will relate to this. Mistakes. Oh, this word, mistakes, mistakes. Mental toughness will not avoid entirely that you make not that you are not making any mistakes. Being mentally tough does not mean that you will be perfect. You will continue to make mistakes, and we have to accept that. That's part of of the game. I believe they actually analyzed one of the games of Xavi when he was playing for FC Barcelona, and they 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 said he almost had the perfect game. I believe he only kind of missed one pass. But that's one in how many games. And that's one player in how many players. So it's very important that if you're mentally tough, it doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes. Mistakes are part of the game. And sometimes we can fall, and I'll use this analogy, in a hole. Maybe it's the same hole. Maybe it's the same mistake. But pay attention to this. But you're not the same player. And that's very important. You might be making the same mistake, but now you say, I'm a different player. So now your approach towards the game, the approach towards the mistake is very different. And that's where we can see mental toughness. But mistakes will happen. It's part of it. But it's also, as I said, it also makes it exciting. Yeah. Because it can go your way. It can go anywhere, any other way. What do you think? This is a very good one. I'm sure that yeah, you hear it. this one very often. It's about your it's about your reaction to it, right? Like you know, you take a I I always refer to like Messi because he has the the most um, unsuccessful dribbling rate in La Liga. Yes. The most unsuccessful dribbling rate. Now if if Messi wasn't mentally tough, that would do you in, wouldn't it? Yes. But he's also got the highest dribbling rate in yes. La Liga. Yes. And I always ask my players, I'm like, what does that tell you? Right? That that tells you that he is not if someone strips him of the ball, he is not dwelling on that moment. Yes. Right. His his mindset is almost like, okay, give me the ball again. Yes. Right. Now I don't know what's going on in his head, you know. But he's one that I refer to and Ronaldo as well, because they just seem to be Obviously, they're technically ridiculous, but they just seem to be so well put together mentally. Yes. Right, and it and it come with Ronaldo. It, you know, I think he kind of gets the short end of the stick. He, he, everyone says, "Oh, he's so arrogant." Well, I, I call it sports arrogance. Yes. Right, I, I say sports arrogance, and it's where like you know you're good, and that's yes. okay. Yes. It's okay to know you're good. Yes. Like society was stuck in this thing that everybody has to be humble. Everybody has to be humble. Yeah, it's all right to yeah. have a bit of swag about you. Yes. Right? I agree. You work really hard. Yes. Yes. Yes, I agree entirely. And that's where sometimes we confuse confidence with arrogance. And I actually I actually say to players, you have to be confident and this idea of oh being humble. I don't want to show off. That's very different than really when you're stepping on the field and you say, I believe in myself and I know as well, because this is very important, I've put the work, I've yeah. put the sets and reps. Because sometimes players don't do that and then they step on the field and they pretend and it's something that they haven't worked for, which is, which is also a, a big mistake. Yeah. So um, number six. This, I believe, all of us will identify as well. Mental toughness. We, 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 we believe that being vulnerable is equal to weak. But that's not the case. Vulnerable is not equal to weak. So when we speak about mental toughness, sometimes players believe, oh, if I'm mentally tough, I can't show that I'm a human. I can't show that I'm vulnerable because that means that I'm weak. 
And that's not true. That's not the case. In fact, I, I, I remember the, the, um, the Amazon documentary on, uh, what was it, on Pep Guardiola with Man City. There is a situation. I can't remember exactly how it went. And then he says, look, I don't know. I don't know. And they asked him, why were you open about that to your players that you don't know? And he's like, well, because I don't know. But that doesn't mean I'm weak. I'm just showing that I'm a human being. And that is very important. You know, I, I, I make mistakes all the time. There are some moments when I don't feel very comfortable. But that, I, I, but that doesn't mean I'm weak. Yeah. That's really, really important. And the greatest leaders, the leaders that we follow, are, are very good at this part. They show you their human side. They show you that they're human. But then you say, oh, but that doesn't mean that they're weak. Yeah, it's, Pepe, it's funny because one of the exercises for 30 days of accountability, we had players write down their like, weaknesses and their goals and get really detailed with it. Yes. And one of them is like a complete rock star. She's called Sid. I'm not sure if she's in here right now. But yes. She's called Sid. And she she wrote hers down. And I was like, you know, guys, if you want to share them on social media, go ahead. And, you know, Sid put, you know, this is a little bit cringe, but here's my thing. Right? And she yes. Wrote, and it's funny that you put this in, right? Because we haven't spoke about what you're going to put in. And I retweeted it. And I said, vulnerability is never cringe. Yes. Right? Because, and this is so bang on, like where we are in society right now. It's like, if you show any sort of vulnerability, yes, people jump on you. Yes. Right? And, and you're 100% right. Like, why? Yeah. You know, like, I, I make mistakes every single day. I didn't work out today. Yeah. Because I made the mistake of getting up. One, one's just giving me a right evil look. <laughs> I, I made the mistake of getting up and I didn't get straight out of bed. That's my mistake. Yes. Right? But people, I don't know, man. People, like, they're scared. Like, I feel like everybody needs to, they think they need to be seen as almost like a Terminator. Yes. Right? I'm amazing at everything. Nothing affects yeah. me. Well, it does affect you. Yes. So, and, and you were giving the example, and let's let's do this exercise because it applies a lot to social media. Because let's say that we, you know, pick we, let's let's pick Cristiano Ronaldo because he's maybe the, the the example that we were using. You know, so so Cristiano Ronaldo, you see this, right? You see something. I'm just going to make this closer. So you're only seeing one side of his life, one side of the story. Yes, but what you're not seeing is everything that's behind it. All of this. All of this. Now, I don't personally know him, but I can assure you that there are some things in his life that are not right. There are some things that he doubts. There are some things that he makes mistakes. There are some moments, days that he wasn't, doesn't want to practice. I can assure you because it's part of being a human being. But what social media does, unfortunately, is that it only shows us this. It shows us the 10% very similar to an iceberg, but we don't see the rest. And it's important that we recognize that because maybe it's not Cristiano Ronaldo, maybe it's your friend. And you see the social media of your friend, you're like, whoa, he or she really has it together. Look, they're so yeah. happy. They're, oh, they're doing great. Oh, this situation isn't affecting them. Oh, they're saying that because of this pandemic, they're going to become better and they're working. You don't see the rest. Trust me. And, and why do I know this? Because I really, really work with a lot of high achievers, people that are considered very successful around the world. And working with them, I can see those areas. And I can tell you guys that you only see 10% or even less with social media. Yeah. And it, do, you, do you do that with people? I do that with competitors. What? I look at like their social and I'm like, oh my God, they're killing Yes. Us. Yes, yes, yes. It's normal. It's normal. It's no well because once again, not now, but but that part of competition in in one situation was the difference between if you lived or you didn't. So competition yeah. is so ingrained in us because it's this situation of always wanting to 
to stay alive. So if we see that someone is doing better, that means that that's going to negatively affect us. But that's but that's not the case. It's crazy. Yes, but it happens all the time. So once again, I would say it's normal. But I would say it's being augmented. It, it grows because of social media. So if you spend a lot of time, and it happens to me as well, a lot of time on social media, you will notice that most likely your mood and your emotions go down. They don't tend to go up. Clearly, you're not on TikTok yet. No, no. I, I, I just have one or two videos. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, you're I, actually you're right, right? Because especially with social, but you know, for you as well, it's part of your it's part of your business is to be on yeah. social. Part of my business to be on social. But if I spend more than an hour on it, I'm I'm like done for days. Yes. yes. My brain's just like Yes. I'm yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why it's very draining. So, so, but I would say it's normal. Some of the guys are asking if we can mirror the, um, the screen. I'll do, that. I'll do that on the replay. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Sorry, um, guys. I just, I can't write the other way around. I'm, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> He's writing in his second language. So. <laughs> Is it your first or second language? It's half of my language. The other half is Mexican. So my mom's English, my dad's Mexican. So Where's that's why from? she's from England, close to Manchester, a small town called Aberton. Really? You still yes. sound posh? He's yeah, well. Yeah. He's a northerner and a Mexican. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I can say that. It's a joke. All of my friends are Mexican. <laughs> okay, so we're up to number six, right? Yeah, so number seven. Um, so I think this is, this is very important. And when we're speaking about mental toughness, sometimes it goes a bit related with leadership. And some players tend to think that mental toughness is only for the captain. Yes. So because I'm not the captain, then I shouldn't be mentally tough. It's not expected from me. I don't I don't have that responsibility. So yes, you know, I can I can play hard and everything, but mental toughness is for the true leaders. I'm not a leader. I am quiet. I am shy. I all of these things. I'm not vocal. And and mental toughness has nothing to do with being the captain or not. I actually say to, to every single player, the whole idea is that you become the captain of your own destiny, the captain of your own career, and that there are all sorts of leaders in this world, and all, obviously on the field, there are different leaders and different types of leadership. You know, some like to lead going at, 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 um, at the front of the team, some lead from the back, some are needed in the middle. But, but mental toughness isn't only for the captains or for those that tend to shine. Mental toughness is for everyone. And mental toughness really helps you develop leadership skills in your way, the way that you feel comfortable. And that's very important. So, And I see that a lot of players get confused with this and get confused with the idea of leadership, mental toughness, or, well, I'm not really a leader. Yes, you are. It's just that you're different in a different way. So that that's that's number seven, which um, I believe is also very important. Brilliant. Um, so, Pepe, I just want to, before we get into, because there's one question that I really wanted to get into from the class. Yes. But um, for everybody who hasn't signed up yet, um, what is the website? Yeah, so the website, it's 6 p.m. sports. I think so. I just saw it right now. Uh, forward slash 10 day. 10 day. Yes. All right. So um, don't go to sleep yet because you're I'm about to ask Pepe your question. <laughs> so, how would you encourage or instill mental toughness and mm. grit from a young player in the foundation development phase? So, in England, that's young, right? Yes. Or in yes. youth development. Yes. So, how would you? Because th that is a question that we get a lot as well. Is like, you know, how young do we start this? And I always tell them, like, the younger the better. Yes. 
And so, I could be wrong. So you, you go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's 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 debatable. I would say so. The the but the way I always work, even with young and older players, is through stories, because mental toughness a lot has to do with the perspective as to how you're seeing a specific situation. So, so I'll give this example. So let's, let's see, something happens, right? This is, this is something that happened, an action happens, a situation, yes? So you might be seeing it from here, this situation. This is your perspective, right? So that happened and you're telling yourself that story and you're saying, well, this is what I can see from this side. But my job is to show you and help you that you can see it also from this side and from this side and from this side and from this side and so forth. And then you can decide which one helps you the most. So, so when a younger player is, is uh, starting his career, it's very important to, to, to use analogies, so stories, because by telling a story, then the player understands the concept. So I'll, I'll tell you a story. How about that? I'll, yeah. I'll tell you guys a little story. It's a very interesting, funny story. Um, for those that are in England, that are going to bed. It's a it's a bedtime story. Well, no, no, it's not. But uh, but it's a it's a story that 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 goes with how we use our language. So language is very important. So I, I, I'm not sure if I read in the comments, but I hear very often players that say, "Oh yeah, I like that." I'm going to try it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try that. So I tell them, okay, let me just ask you, are you really going to try it? Or let me just tell you a little story and see if what you're going to do about it. So there, there was this guy that, that, um, that went to Africa and there was a tribe there and um, they speak Swahili. So he didn't speak the language, so he had a translator. So he was seeking to build um a community so he went there and he said oh yes and here we're going to build this and the translator would go to everyone <laughs> so everybody's like yeah so and then he'd say oh and over there we're going to build this and he would go like oh <laughs> and everybody like yeah that sounds that i don't speak swahili so i really don't know what that means but uh, everybody would clap and was, were they were very excited and then he said and over here, we're going to try and build this. And the translator doesn't say anything. And the guy's like, come on, translate. Over there, we're going to try and build this. And the translator doesn't say anything. He's like, why don't you translate? And he said, well, sir, the thing is that in our language, the word try does not exist. So either we do it or we don't do it, but we don't try it. So, so I believe that that's very important. So that story, for instance, a young player would understand the story and say, oh, my language can affect how I approach a certain situation. So instead of me explaining it, it's through a story that a young player starts to understand these concepts. I tell these stories to old players, professional players, and they understand it as well. So it's just part of of being creative and that mental toughness, as I said, is something that in my um, point of view, it's also something that can be very interesting and exciting once you start seeing the results it has. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Pepe, thank you very much for today. Now, I know we've, we've got the 10-day challenge, which is 6pmsports.com forward slash 10-day. Yes. Um, everybody, it's a... It's a free um, download, right? Like Pepe has been very gracious enough to give us this for free. And we're going to come back. We're going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday this week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday the following week, I think. We're on 10 days. Yes. So we'll be back on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, which I believe is 6 p.m. for you, Pepe. Is that right? Exactly, 6 Wednesday. p.m. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Guys, I'll email everybody anyway to remind you. But please go to Pepe's website. And Pepe, what's your Instagram? Uh, I think it's Pepe Galvin 5. You can tell that I, I really know all these things. Pepe Galvin 5 is his um, Instagram. And, you know, this isn't about getting followers. This is about quality. And you can see like what yes. Pepe brought to the table today 
it's quality. It's stuff you can just jump on and use straight away. And the 10 day challenge is to basically, we're going to try and transform you in, in a small amount of time so that yes. you understand yourself more, right? I'll say exactly. That and, and also the, the 10 days, it comes with audios and it comes with a training manual as well. So we, we're basically giving you everything because I really believe that this is a situation where we can help each other a lot, but also it's a perfect situation where you can put, really put this into practice. So yeah. that's why. Kevin, Sid, Sid, who I was talking about earlier, yeah. who no longer cringes and she's now happy being vulnerable. What well, day should we complete, complete the, what day should we complete by Wednesday? So that'd be, today is day one, right? Tuesday, day two, Wednesday, day three. Yes, exactly. So, uh, so I believe some people signed up yesterday, so they already received day one. It doesn't matter if you didn't start yesterday, you can do it today. But yes, the, the ideal situation would be that for Wednesday, you would be at day three. And if you're not, that's okay. The whole idea is that everything com complements one thing. Yeah. Um, so the actual yeah. program, you do something every day, so there's audios in there for you. Um, but we'll come back every other day to make sure you're in on it. On Wednesday, we're going to look to bring someone in as well yeah so yeah that'd be good days, i'll shoot you an email and if you're comfortable being on camera come on and if you're uncomfortable come on anyway because you need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable yes yes or maybe if they send us also you know if it's uh if it's a message or email or whatever with some of uh, an obstacle that they're currently facing or that they've faced in the past It'd be great because that way we can be specific of the situation and find a way to solve it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, guys, I will I will try and download this and get it up on YouTube um, tonight, possibly tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, Pepe, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Happy to um, help. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. I will see you all on Wednesday, Peppy. You're a legend. I will see you Wednesday. Cheers. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.